Are you a witch player? Are you done with the easy part of questing to 61 and are now aiming for 62 for that juicy Kaposha earring? Or to brag to your friends about your virtual achievements? But does the thought of having to sell your soul and grind for weeks upon weeks for microscopic XP gains haunt you at night? Then this video is just for you, because I will show you how you can speed up the process and reduce the number of hours you'll have to hit yourself by a significant amount. Polly's Forest offers some of the best combat XP in the game and it's especially popular among players that don't have the gear to grind at higher end XP spots, say Miramox. It's even more relevant now that we have the seasonal servers and many players are either new to the game or are looking to make viable boss alts for relatively little effort. Basically, it is the place to be if your goal is to level up your character and by making the most of your rotation and killing as many monsters as possible, you can clear your weekly seasonal quest at Polly's in about 40 minutes if you're a seasoned character or, in other words, you can fill about 28 Marnie Stones and make close to 5% XP per hour. Before we begin, this XP is what you get at level 61 towards level 62. I would say don't waste your time seriously grinding anywhere in this game before hitting level 61. It is faster and easier to side quest to 61, and every single hour you grind for XP prior to level 61 could have been you just spamming R at some random NPC. If you don't know what I'm talking about, do not worry, there are plenty of guides out there that explain to you how you can get to 61 just by side questing alone. So do hit that up on YouTube or Google and you'll find it in a matter of seconds. If you're worried about not having enough SP once you hit level 61, you don't have to be as it's very easy to catch up. If your gear isn't insane already, you'll most likely be grinding at low end spots such as Polly's Forest anyway. And the good thing about these spots is that most monsters will die in one hit no matter what you do. Plus, Polly's Forest is pretty much the best place to gain SP experience as well, so once you start grinding here, you'll catch up in no time. Now let's get into what you will need to ramp up your clearing speed as much as possible. The first thing you'll need is enough AP to one-shot the mobs. Now this one is very easy. If you're an obedient BDO player and you just do your story quest, you'll end up with gear that's more than enough to clear the mushrooms just fine. It may depend a little bit on your class and you may not start out with maxed out skills right away. So let us just say 180 AP to be on the absolutely safe side. Why is this important? It's important because one of the golden rules of clearing these low-end grind spots is that you only use one skill per every pack that you encounter on your rotation. This is where a lot of your clearing speed and XP gains come from. You'll want to move up to a pack, cast one skill and move on. As witches, no matter what we cast, it's probably gonna be some kind of AoE. So we don't really have to aim or worry about not clearing everything. But even if you position yourself very badly or you fling your rocks in random directions and something lives, ignore them, do it better next rotation and move on. No auto attacks, no forward F to clear leftovers, just move on. Gotta go fast. On the note of fast, the next thing you'll need is 5 movement speed. The way you attain that very easily is via the simple crown meal, which gives you 3, and 2 crystals that you can slot into your shoes that give you 1 movement speed each. We actually do have quite good pack-to-pack -pack mobility in the form of our teleport, but it's on a 7 second cooldown, so whenever it's not up, we have to walk between packs, and that's when this movement speed comes in very handy. Next up, you'll need 5 casting speed. The way you do that is again your simple crown meal, which will give you 2. And then if you have a Tuvala weapon or a Zarka weapon, that will give you the other 3 casting speed that you need to cap out. If you do not have these weapons, there are crystals for your helmet that give you 2 casting speed per crystal and crystals for your gloves that give you 1 cast speed per crystal. You can make your combination of those two types of crystals to somehow get to 5 casting speed. It's one of the most important things to have when grinding because it increases the animation speed of literally all of your skills. The next thing you'll need is a 100% uptime of your Z buff. Now your Z buff, that's what you can get if you charge up your Black Spirit Rage bar and then press Z 
and it gives you a massive 20% cast speed buff for a whole minute. This is very noticeable, especially if you've been grinding for a while, and you'll be clearing way faster with this buff. I would advise you to deactivate your Black Spirit's Rage 100% skill, that's the Earthquake or the Earth Wave one. It's really not that great, and it's way better to have your Z buff up all of the time instead. And because monsters die so easily, and because you'll be clearing at a high speed, you will have no problem keeping this buff up all of the time. So do keep track of the timer in your buff bar, and if you're too lazy to do that, you can just recast it whenever you're back at 100% BSR. You'll also want 100% uptime of the blue heart buff. It's this blue sphere buff that witches have, the one that gives you passive MP regeneration, but more importantly it also gives you another 10% movement speed bonus so you're even quicker on your feet. Then you'll want to stack as many XP buffs as you possibly can. Now on screen you can see which buffs I had activated for this specific session, and this time I grinded with a total of about 1850% bonus XP. I used Marnie Stones, the 250 version, for even more XP, but there are also a few more XP buff that I did not make use of during this session, so if you add these on top, your results may be even better than mine. Okay, I think this is all for everything that you need to prepare before you start grinding, but now let's get into the actual rotation. So you can see it in the background already, but I use a rather extensive rotation, it's, it's a very big wide circle and it's a rotation that is optimized for witches or wizards for that matter and I wouldn't necessarily follow it precisely on other classes. For one it consists of bigger packs wherever possible. There are some packs here and there in the forest that are just very small and really not worth your time as you could be nuking a bigger one. And since whatever button we press pretty much always results in AoE, we can afford to only go for the bigger ones. Another point you want to consider when planning your rotations are your movement skills. We only have one. It is one of the best in the game, but on a rather long cooldown, F7 to upwards of 10 seconds for the double one. Now if you pay attention to my cooldown timer in the background of my teleport, you'll see that it is almost always on cooldown. This skill allows you to instantaneously move to the next pack with almost no travel time and we want to make the best possible use of it. The same goes for our double teleport, which there are exactly 5 locations throughout this entire rotation where this double teleport bridges larger gaps between desirable packs and makes everything so much faster. Another mechanic, I guess, that you'll want to make use of when looking to maximize clearing speed, um, especially with witches and wizards, is your stowing away of your weapons to run faster while walking or running between packs. We all know that your character walks and runs faster with sheathed weapons, and with witches and wizards, in Awakening that is, you can do that even in combat because it happens super fast. There's no long animation or anything, like if you're playing Alon and you take out your weapons, she has to do an entire dance or whatnot to just take out her swords, but with witches and wizards it's very easy. You just press tab and there you go, your orbs are gone or they appear. So if you do that while walking between packs and you see me do this between pretty much every pack that I have to walk, you'll get even more out of your invested time because you move faster between packs, it translates into more kills per hour, more money, more XP, it's just more efficient. It takes a bit to get used to, in the beginning it's kind of weird, you'll find yourself pressing tab too early or too late and then she doesn't switch at all or you find yourself standing in front of the next pack, weapons sheathed, pressing shift F, nothing happens and they're just kind of looking at you, or you somehow end up in staff mode and start flinging earthquakes around. It's a bit of a mess at the beginning, but it starts paying off very, very quickly. If you combine everything I've mentioned thus far and follow all these tips, you'll end up with a rotation that looks quite nice and 
plays smoothly. And here I think I'll shut up for a minute and you can just enjoy the rotation itself. As you can see in this first clip, I started out with 68.199% XP and I ended up with 90.194. So that is almost a perfect 4% XP gain just from killing the mobs alone. I have also inserted clips for every 1000 mushrooms killed to show you my progression in the seasonal weekly kill quest. With this rotation and all the aforementioned tips, I was able to clear the quest in about 42 minutes and 40 seconds, give or take a bit, and I was able to fill 28 Marnie stones, which translated into another 0.7%. And look at that, I started out with 86.199 and ended with 90.8. 899. That's a perfect 4.7% to the last digit. I did not edit this, I didn't cheat or anything, it just happened to turn out this way. As to how this compares to what other classes can pull, I'm not sure, I do not have any numbers on other classes, but I would say that probably something like a Guardian or a Musa with insane pack-to-pack -pack mobility can pull the same if not better XP per hour and maybe even other classes, like I really just don't know. But if you do, do feel free to let me know because I'm quite interested in how other classes perform in let's say low end grind spots. I do think that witches kind of have an edge in these kinds of spots because of their AoE and because of their teleport. Those two things aren't that important in higher end spots as you'll spend more time in the pack and that's where other classes shine. To summarize, get yourself enough AP to one shot the packs. Then only use one skill per pack, get yourself 5 movement speed, 5 cast speed, keep your Z buff up 100% of the time, keep your blue heart buff up 100% of the time, get yourself every possible XP buff that you can get your hands on, make optimal use of your teleports, and sheathe your weapons when walking or running in between packs. I hope this video helped and if you have any tips for me, do feel free to let me know, because I told you everything I know, not that I know everything. With that said, enjoy your time in the forest and happy leveling.